Don in London, hello. It's November the 11th, 2011. It's Remembrance Day. It's uh, about all the people who fought in wars, who died, and uh, I suppose my dad was part of the war and what happened. And it's a sort of Remembrance Day, and it's Remembrance Sunday this weekend. So the 11th day, November the 11th, 11th hour, few minutes away, 45 minutes away. And the reason why I'm not doing a, a road, this is a road to recovery video, my road to recovery video. Most of my uh, videos are all about finding recovery, getting sober from addiction to either substance or behaviour. Uh, the most addictive substance that got me into trouble and pulled me down and down into the depths of dis despair and desolation was alcohol. And I guess f for me, uh, I was well trained in how to drink. Drink like a man, be the last man standing and all of that. And my dad is part of my story. He drank a lot. In any, anybody's estimation, given the amount he drank all his life, he was drink dependent and was never without one until, until his final few days on the planet. And uh, it's because of him, actually, that probably I made a decision to try and find out how to be sober. I knew about my problem. It would take me from happiness to desperate sadness, not wanting to wake up and always trying to find oblivion. And my emotions, my feelings didn't work anymore, not normally, and I had no real contact with reality, or rather the reality I was living was to be in a state of oblivion or a state of anxiety or despair. June 1st, 2004 was my sober date. It was the first day of continuous sobriety where I didn't drink. And what happened that day? June 1st, it was glorious. It was glorious. And I'd been going to the Fellowship of AA for some time. And I'd been in rehab and run away. And I'd gone back out drinking on rage and anger at the way life was and the way I felt I was being treated which was an, ab an abomination to me drunk or sober and all day I'd been going to different meetings Saturdays were good days for meetings in London and around about 8 o'clock I was sitting in the centre of Hyde Park Corner where there is a big monument to all the people who fought in wars, there's a great big wall and a great, and a great number of names of places where people fought on behalf of the empire I guess as it was and now just the United Kingdom and my dad was part of that and before he even got into the services, he was in the RAF, he had a very bad start in life and I think some of the happiest times he had in between the most monstrous times were in the army or the air force but it did develop a really big habit for drinking and I learned how to drink from him he died early because he didn't stop drinking until it was too late and you know I remember vividly going to see him and my mother down in Wales where they were living and he was talking about a big project he wanted to develop and make into a business. And as he talked about it, he started talking about his experiences in the war, World War II. And I asked him, Dad, this is just not making sense. One minute you're talking about the project that you want to develop now. This was back in 1991. And at the same time you're talking about the war. And he looked at me as if I was mad. And then urging him to get some medical help. It turned out that he hadn't got very long to live and he, he expired or died, whatever word you want to use, popped his clogs about 
eight weeks or nine weeks later because it was too late to do anything about anything and I drank on that for a long time and I and a relationship which I cherished ended at the same time because some things just have to end and I didn't understand how to, how to grieve my losses so I drank and drank and drank and my behaviour became more and more extreme trying to find happiness and I couldn't so years and years of success in some ways materially and then losing the lot and ending, ending up on my own sitting in Hyde Park Corner looking at all these places where people fought and I could see places where my father was stationed during the war I never knew really what he did other than he crashed three aeroplanes in training so they put him into signals and something else and he became a warrant officer and if he stayed in the Air Force I guess he would have gone on to be a commissioned officer at some stage maybe but anyway the point is in that few minutes of sitting, sitting there round about 8 in the evening very warm evening in June not yet dark and there's a meeting of AA just down the road behind Buckingham Palace and it's called the Afternoon Meeting on a Saturday and I went to it and I listened I've decided in that place at that time it was a good idea that I would not follow in my dad's footsteps and never recover from whatever it was that was bothering me so I went to the afternoons meeting and I was still very shaky I think it probably was a day or two of not drinking already and I'd been put in some horrible places to stay overnight which smelt of death and decay and people using and doing whatever they do when they are addicted and it was a I suppose a lot of things coming into one moment which said I need not drink tonight so I went to the meeting listened I don't know if I shared or not I can't remember but the point is it was a starting point of saying okay I need not drink today so this is a special day it was my it's the anniversary of my dad's well it was his birthday date yesterday now it's 11 11 not quite 11 and he had a great impact on me I loved him dearly didn't know how much I loved him till he was gone I was very lucky that we had words to share at the end and he stopped drinking and he stopped smoking and he ate fruit and good food for the few weeks he had left and I said dad why have you stopped drinking and smoking and he said I've got nothing to fear anymore and the other things were he said I never shared how much I loved your mum never shared how much I cherished her and never really understood how to and because my other relationship beautiful girl all good it just turned out that we couldn't be together he said if you're being treated superficially and with indifference and not being cherished those three words will help you in your life because he said this is the only time in my life I've realized what's been going on because he had a clear head so he said cherish people and if you're treating them with superficiality and indifference then that's how you're treating yourself so these days I try not to be superficial or indifferent and try and cherish people and it's so important but it doesn't mean that life becomes puritan puritanical I don't go out like a pilgrim with a, a dark outfit with a pointy hat and say you know I'm a puritan because recovery isn't about being a puritan it's about stopping something which is causing us harm self-harm and then moving on to something which is not harming us and I know many people who give up everything at once <coughs> and it doesn't work that way a psychiatrist I knew when I was working I used to help him with people 
he couldn't medicate very strange but he said if you're trying to give up addictive substances do one at a time and do it one day at a time and I didn't really click with what he was saying to me because I didn't know I had that drinking problem it had never impeded me I thought but it did it covered up my fear it made me put on a brave face put on a stiff upper lip and stand on my own two feet trying to use self-will and self-will and willpower eventually will fail and we can become overwhelmed with everything our feelings are out there at the extremes our understanding of reality is gone so on Remembrance Day I remember my dad I didn't know how much I loved him until those last few weeks when he was able to tell the truth of his situation and how he felt about it he never talked about the war experiences but he went to some very interesting places and the photographs of that are, are still about and I cherish them I cherish the fact that he was my dad he may have been an alcoholic and had a very difficult life but he was a very humorous person and he was full of vigour a lot of the time somehow he just kept on going even when he went bankrupt and had probably had a nervous breakdown and couldn't cope anymore I don't think he ever got over it but again you know I had a nervous breakdown working myself and into the ground and becoming exhausted giving up everything and taking anti antidepressants to try and get me out of an anxiety state but it didn't work because I was still out at the extremes of feeling and not knowing how to stop fearing anything so these days I'm sober it's been a few years now and I owe my dad gratitude for who he was how he was and the life he lived he was probably one of the most difficult characters you could encounter because on the one hand he was a charmer and a lover on the other hand there was a part of him that he could never reveal and he was very angry about how life had turned out so these days what have I learned from that well getting sober going to AA meetings the fellowship of AA I've learned how to be sober one day at a time and le learning how to cherish people and cherishing people doesn't mean you, you just adore them cherishing is a two-way street loving them is a two love is a two-way street and often I say I'm learning how to love be loved and useful life is the way it is humans are funny I'm sometimes quite funny I have all the memories of life all the good bad indifferent the naughty times the immensely pleasurable mischievous times which still happen because life is like that and I love to love it's great so I know what love is these days it's unconditional it's just loving people as they are not trying to change them but I've had to change me and my attitudes over the last few years so fellowship for me the AA program I don't speak about it or people in it I don't speak about no I do speak about AA but I don't represent AA ever and it's the 11th month which is all about prayer meditation for me in the 12 step program and it's all about how we share about recovery the tradition for this month there are 12 traditions and 12 steps 12 steps to keep me happy open honest and willing or unhappy but still open honest and willing to live and those 12 steps help me sort out and live a good life happy sad mischievous flirty whatever it is I just live life and the 12 traditions are about unity service and recovery and tradition 11 is about uh, not revealing yourself as a person in fellowship or trying to represent AA through press radio or films so that's why I say I don't represent AA but I share about how it helps me and anonymity is a personal issue my anonymity as a recovering alcoholic is my issue and I can share about it but I may not in my own opinion share about anybody else's recovery specifically or name people because it just wouldn't be on 
anonymity provides a sanctuary to find the truth of who we are so if we can find the truth of who we are and live and cope in reality whatever's happening then we are on track it's an emotional spiritual program of progress and not perfection so emotionally if I know what my feelings are today and I've had a very funny email which is really good, good for me and I feel the same way it's funny when you get uh, somebody who you could just you could probably talk to them forever and know it would be alright and good that's how it works life in recovery and the tradition around what do we do if we're out there and we were to drink again what, would it, what impact would it have on the fellowship of AA and people in it and the simple answer is they would say is he going to come back is he going to have another go at sobriety if he did relapse so within the fellowship the issue is sobriety the anonymity thing around press radio and films comes from a different era and it is often said that anonymity is the spiritual foundation of the fellowship but for me you know, the spiritual foundation of living is truth and coping with reality so if I find the truth of now and cope with it and live it and ex experience it every element of life I'm on track and if people want to know me because they see me as an honest open honest willing person then I'm okay but if people see me as something different to open honest and willing they will avoid me so if they know I'm in recovery from addiction that's good and if they want to know me that's good and if they don't want to know me it saves a lot of time because they know what they're dealing with and I know what I'm dealing with we all have prejudice against us for some reason or other it's just the way life is but what I know now on a remem remembrance day like this 11, 11, 11 coming up to 11 o'clock 4 elevenths I'm not a numerologist but it's quite a coincidence now today I do remember my father so fondly and the fact that if it hadn't been for me sitting in Hyde Park on the 1st of June 2004 looking at those places where he was involved in World War II and what happened to him after that without that little jolt of saying OK Dad, I'll have a go and it's strange because when he did die I was standing in a supermarket car park in a place called Dalston not too far where, from where I lived near Highbury and I felt that feeling of a person going I don't know what it is we sometimes feel it, sometimes we don't feel it if we're close to a person and we know what's going on for them and the very last gasp was around about ten past seven in the evening for him I cherish those moments I don't often deeply think about them but you know these these moments in life are catalysts for change so I guess I'm very thankful for that time June 1st 2004 where I saw the places where he fought and the impact of that war and the impact of how he was brought up as an orphan adopted by two people who couldn't cope with life what an awful start you know he looked after them rather than them looking after him it's weird but I'm grateful and uh, you know life turns out the way it does it's just good that it turned out and I'm still alive today with a few years extra which were never really on the map for me I would have quite happily expired back then because it was just too desolate and awful and the idea of trying to be sober forever I never realized it's only one day it's always one day which works so fellowship works as it does for me the Alcoholics Anonymous fellowship works for me and other people one day at a time what you see is what you get you can't be fixed what you see is what you get you hear wisdom experience strength and hope and if you have a desire to stop drinking there are ways to do it so not my usual format today I'm honouring my dad more than anything because 
without him I wouldn't be here and without his example I wouldn't have been jolted on that particular day to remember how and why I got sober I did it for me definitely and I did it because I just did it and it's good to be alive it's good to have cherishing moments it's good to have the fact that I know sometimes I treat people with superficiality and indifference because that's how they treat me that I don't do it deliberately it's just how life turns out but it's good sometimes when you make a connection with another human being who has a, a very happy nature inside them which is growing and developing and it makes me smile you know sometimes we can only help one person and uh, if we've kept a person sober for a few minutes, a few hours a day that I have gratitude to be able to do it because before I'd become completely useless and didn't know how to love people or be loved back so I'm still a learner and one of the things I've learned is forgive everybody everything no matter what forgive everybody everything and you can forgive yourself because if you don't you won't make progress you know, the more we hold on to hate and undermining resentments the more we stay in the problem and don't get into recovery we have to deal with our own situation daily and in fellowship we do it with other, with other people and we always have people to ring providing we've got their telephone number so life goes on that's me for now uh, yeah I did love my dad I still love my mum she's coming up to 80 dad would have been about 86 85, 86 but he didn't get past 65 and um, that was a good age in the olden days it was a pensionable age but he didn't feel he could ever retire actually I don't feel I can either simple reason I like living one day at a time you never know what's around the corner you never know who you're going to bump into and I live in Chelsea and London where there are 700 meetings of the fellowship just say hey never mind the other fellowships you know we can go anywhere at any time just about and share a few moments with other human beings on the path of progress trying to be open honest and willing to live life as it can be and sometimes we're happy, sad, angry, lonely, tired you name it we just live all walks of life no boundaries, no barriers, no rules, no laws no obligations unless you take up a commitment to do something but it's your personal choice no rules, laws or obligations at all there's another word rules, laws, regulations entry is free a desire to stop drinking listen to experience strength and hope and a primary purpose of helping each other keep sober one day at a time so that's me done for today remembrance day 11 11 11 and it will be the 11th hour very shortly so happy birthday for yesterday dad wherever you happen to be I know one of the good things is when we're grieving we can actually talk to the pe person who's gone because they probably are part of our prayer and meditation around life whether you believe or you don't believe in God agnostic, atheist or believer depending on life experience we work out what is our own outlook our own opinion all good but for me what is working knowing my emotional and spiritual condition right now and that's down to the many people in fellowship and that, for that I've, I have great, great gratitude so the many fellows in the fellowship thank you and nobody nobody need ever feel alone again so the worst thing is when we first come in we feel alone in a room, a crowded room where well, we feel insignificant and then we start to understand we are equal no matter what or where we've got to and letting go and letting life back in 
is all part of the key. We live our consequences all quickly. Anyway, I'm stopping now. Happy birthday, Dad, for yesterday. And I loved him. And I couldn't say that for many a year. Because I was awkward around it. And so was he. Anyway, these days. And it's good. All those things happened. Recovery rocks. Enough. The serenity prayer, which I use all the time, keeps me in the I can do and what I can't do and learning the wisdom between the two so as an atheist, agnostic and believer at different times in my life this is a prayer to good conscience or God as is right for you not for me I've, under, I've got to where I am God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference courtesy of every single person who has ever helped me in the moment of now imperfectly perfect moment of now and just for today Thank you.